Okay, so in this video, I'm just doing a quick update um, on the D3 uh, split software. And it is the software I use to create my uh, occlusal guards and whatnot. Uh, most of the occlusal guards in my office that I do in office are anterior to programmers. Um, and uh, if I'm going to be doing a more of a full arch, like a Michigan splint or a flat plane, I tend to outsource those lately. Um, but uh, the anterior to programmers I'm stu still doing in office. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time being real elaborate on this case. I'm just going to kind of walk you through what I do, and hopefully it's helpful. Um, so uh, the software is now opened up. It's updated. Make sure you do that. I have videos to show you how to update it. First thing I'm going to do is go to Splint Workflow. Uh, it says not for clinical use. That's just basically you're taking responsibility for what the design the outcome from here. So um, the software developers aren't taking responsibility. If you don't like that, if that doesn't make you comfortable, then go ahead and set it to a lab. Um, this is akin to making one in your lab and you're going to take responsibility for it. So now for this, the maxilla, that's the data type. Um, I'm going to make it an anterior to programmer. I'll click on implant uh, STL models. Now you won't be able to see this because I'm going to black this out, but I am going to find my models and I will highlight both of them. Come on over here to hit import STL or just hit the enter button. Now when it first opens up, it tends to be zoomed in super, well, super far. So I'm going to hit the wheel button. I'm going to wheel it way back. And if I click the mouse button, uh, the wheel button, I can rotate things around. Okay. If I need to sh slide things around, I hold the shift button and use that same wheel button. Um, and then if you accidentally right click and you end up wandering around, just hit escape because you don't want to do that. Okay, so follow, and I'm going to follow through this protocol or this um, uh, panel on the left, which is basically going to show me, uh, tell me what to do at all times. So first thing to do is uh, hit the set the split model. Click on that. Now click on here. Set the opposing. Click on here. Set the landmarks. This is telling it what's front, what's back, what's uh, up, what's down, yada yada. Right molar, left molar, and size ledge, and midline. Okay. Now I can go ahead and hit finish. Here's a virtual articulator. Now, if you need to open up the bite a little bit, you can. If you've taken it in occlusion, which I don't recommend, but if you've taken the bite relation in occlusion, this is your opportunity and change the pin here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit change pin setting because I do want to open her, but she's got such a deep bite. And I'm going to go ahead and change this to two and there. Um, not completely opened up, but I'm going to will. I think I can work with this. I don't want to open her too crazy. Uh, it'll be uncomfortable for her um, potentially. So, but that I can work with. So now I'm going to continue going through it. Set articulator values as if you need to really mess with the articulator, which I almost never do. And recover mounting is just if you've opened the bite too much or closed too much and you want to go back to normal, go ahead and click that button. Survey model. This is just telling the software how do you want to insert it. So I usually can kind of just guesstimate. Come right here, click capture view. And then you'll see darkness. That's basically undercut areas. And so I've got no undercuts on the anterior. That tells me I overdid it. So I'm going to come here and hit tweak posterior tweak posterior and I'm gonna keep doing it until I start seeing some shadows popping up and you can see them popping up down there these are disappearing as you can see and then I'm starting to get some shadows up here which I think I'm pretty good with that especially gonna have some on this lateral because of the way it's aligned but other than that I think I'm you know kind of balancing it out and I'm good here so I'm gonna go ahead and click commit So now I'm going to hit save to continue. The software forces you to save, which is good because otherwise, you know, if something happens, you want to make sure that you can get back to it. So I've got, um, okay. And now it's going to, um, I'm going to click this refractory bu model button here. This is determining the offset, how much passivity. I'm going to leave it at 0.12 because that's what I've been doing now. It used to go higher, but now I'm doing that. It's basically creating a shell that is just that much larger than this model so that when it makes the, um, uh, the actual appliance, it can go there. So I'm going to click on Mark the Split Outline. And now I'm going to tell it where I want it. And this is all user preference. I like to go beyond wherever the undercuts are so that there's not like literally a gap at the seeding point, if that makes sense. 
it again, and I forget. Okay, so I'm going to move these. I, I kind of made a mistake, and it's probably a good learning time. I accidentally forgot to include this canine, which I like to include, and I'm going to remove these lines back over here to include the mesial of this premolar. Yeah, these deprogrammers are um, commonly done from... Um, let me connect these again. All right. uh, commonly done, uh, just the four incisors, um, commonly by other people. Not by me. Okay. Click here, here, here. And the software will allow you to connect the endpoints, but I always just end up finding where the line is. Well, it's usually so much easier, but let me connect the endpoints and stuff. So if you look around and you see any red points of the line, that's a time that you want to fix that. You want to adjust it, move a node, add a node, whatever you want to do. There aren't any red spots for me to show you that on, whatever. So I'm going to click next. Now it's going to ask me to select what's the inside of the line. Is it out here or in here? So obviously it's right here. Turns this all green, different color, just demarcating what's the active area. Click next. And now it makes a nice crisp margin. If you don't have that, go back. Try again. It's rare, but if it does, that's why it's a, a, an opportunity to check. So now, right now, it is creating the shell. And then it's going to do the minimum thickness. It's doing this all on its own. It's in the background. Uh, it used to make we used to be forced to do this um, you have to input things, but now it just happens on its own. You can make it not do that, but that's another deal. So now I'm going to make the de entry to programmer. So I'm just going to click right here. Wherever I click this cursor is where the software wants to focus. And so I'm going to add the deprogrammer right there. Default settings. Just go ahead and click on it there. And now, let me bring this up so I can see all these different dimensions of this. And I can see that I need to rock this back a ways. So I'm going to go ahead and dial it up to 20. And then I'm going to also make it a little bit thinner. Say 1.5. And that might be too thin. Um, just based on my experience. And other than that, I think I'm pretty much good. If I click over here, I can move this around. And if I wanted, I could say, eh, that's sticking too far back. I don't need to have it that far back. I would always have a little extra because it's super easy to take a burr and just trim that off. I don't want to have it too short because that's annoying. They need to reprint it, redesign it even. Um, this is a, a thing that I like to do is I like to have this extend farther down. You'll see why in a minute. And that is the support height. So I'm going to dial that up to 5 millimeters. And that's it. So um, really just had to change the angle. I don't usually have to change the angle, but since you got such a deep bite, I had to. It's usually I have to reduce the thickness a little bit, increase that height, and then possibly change the posterior length and the anterior length, just depending. But I think I'm pretty good here. So now I can come over here and I can minimize this again and say, and you don't have to click on this. I'm just trying to make it easier for you to see what I'm doing. I, I click on edit if I want to change things again. Now I just hit fuse deprogrammer. And so now, the the uh, what you didn't see was this was designed already, and now here's the programmer all fused together. Now we want to smooth things out, make sure the transitions aren't so sharp. So we come down here and we go to um, block out concavities, which will help to sometimes fill in this area. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. I'm not too worried about it either way, but I always click that to let it try to. Um, and then I go ahead and hit remesh smooth. And now personally. I do this remesh smooth twice. You'll see what happens in a second. It looks kind of grainy, almost like a Minecraft. <laughs> if any of you have kids, a little bit smoother here, and that's what I'm, I'm good with. Now, I skip the sculpt. Sculpt is your ability to manipulate areas and stuff. I just don't do that, so I'll skip that. And then go to Finalize Splint. And now what's it doing is it's basically subtracting the teeth from the inside. And now we have what we need. That's what we're looking to make. And I am ready to um, uh, get this printed. So all I have to do now here is if you had little things floating around, you can click remove small parts, which basically there aren't any in mind, but that's what it's there for. Generate report, which spits out this thing. And now when I export my STL, it'll save that as a, as a file as well. Um, I'm going to save this here. It'll, it'll export a note uh, that has all your parameters in case you need to get you know support or something. Go ahead and that's it. I'm all done.
All right, hopefully this helps. Now, now this is print ready. Uh, if you want to know how I print mine, I'm going to go ahead and finish off this video by showing you that. Okay, so here, here is the uh, NTI in the printing software. This is for the Rayware software for um, uh, like the Moonray or uh, Sprint Ray Pro printers. And I like to tip it forward so that it basically are creating a coordinate of a V with the um, interior aspect. So this is going to be straight up, but this is going to be leaning over. Um, so almost a 20 degree tilt. So I print a lot of my surgical guides and my night guards. So um, I'm going to go ahead and add supports, uh, medium, medium, generate supports, and we're good to go. All right, hopefully this video was helpful. Thank you so much.